Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Jonathan Sellers. And I'm Danielle Percival. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Sports. Saturday night was historic as the first SEC team visited Veterans Memorial Stadium. Troy put up 572 yards on the Bulldogs' 11th ranked defense, the most an SEC team had given up this season. Those 572 yards were more than the Bulldogs had given up in the first two games combined, but it takes more than yards to win. In front of a record-setting crowd, the Trojans once again racked up offensive yards, but were plagued by penalties and turnovers and suffered their second straight loss, losing 30-24 to against Mississippi State. We, uh, we had plenty of chances to win this game, and it really it makes it hurt even more. I am not the least bit discouraged except for the fact that, that you know, the turnovers. You know, you, you, can't, you can't win with four turnovers. Well, it's a game you should have won, that we could have won, you know, if we just... Uh, Put an end to all the penalties and the mistakes and you know, all the foolishness out on the field. After being down 23 to 7 at halftime, the Trojans fought back in the second half, cutting the Bulldogs' lead to just two points early in the fourth quarter. I got the feeling there in the middle stages of the third quarter that they, there wasn't any way they could stop us on on uh, offense. That just shows us, you know, as an offensive group, that you know nobody that we're going to see can really stop us. But with seven minutes to go in the game, the Bulldogs opted to go for it on fourth and five from the Trojans' 25 and stretched their lead back to nine with a controversial touchdown. We got a replay guy up there. I got to trust that the, uh, the, man, uh, the man upstairs is, uh, is correct. Blakeney said, however, if his team could have stopped the Bulldogs earlier in the drive, the outcome of the game could have been different. Had we been able to kick it deep, we, we got the guy tackled. And we'd, we'd got them a three and out. I, I don't have any question that we'd have been able to win the game. Although the scoreboard read that Mississippi State beat Troy, according to Robinson, it wasn't so much that the Bulldogs beat the Trojans. We've beaten Troy, uh, you know, two weeks in a row now. Uh, you know, if we take care of the football, we're three and zero right now. The the thing we've got to do is we got to learn how to beat Troy before we beat anybody else. But we are good enough to do just about anything. All right, think of the most dominant football conference, SEC, right? Well, then why does the Sun Belt insist on playing the supposed best conference in the land? Sure, there's money involved, but it's also because they think they've got just as good a chance to win as anybody. When you see an SEC Sun Belt matchup on paper, you probably know who will be the favorite. But when it comes down to the Sun Belt players, they are not intimidated by the team across the field from them. We just came out and we were going to play on the best we could, and uh, we were just contesting them like, like they was one of us, you know, like they was in the Sun Belt. And Sun Belt, SEC, no matter what they're in, we're going to come out and compete. For Sun Belt teams, playing the big dogs of the SEC is nothing new. They've done it over 100 times. However, picking up a win against the Southeastern Conference doesn't happen quite as often. The SEC is 95-6 and all-time against Sunbelt teams, but two of those Sunbelt wins have come this season. In Week 2, Louisiana Monroe topped Arkansas in overtime and almost picked up their second SEC victory over Auburn just one week later. This weekend, there were four more SEC Sunbelt matchups. Although the Sunbelt was only 1-3 this weekend, Coach Blakeney said the strength of the conference can be seen in the opponents on the schedule. Everybody in the league's capable. Uh, it's not a bad team in the league. I think the league's competing well out of, out of conference, you know, and with some wins and uh, across conference lines. But across conference lines in the SEC also means it's going to have to be across state lines because Blakeney says Auburn and Alabama understand his team can compete and the message is clear. Don't come. <laughs> well, in the states, you ain't got to worry about them because they don't come. They don't. They won't even let us come. According to Blake, and he, the key for Troy is to get back on the right track and put another W in the win column. I really think the Sun Belt is growing in the right direction, and uh, you know we just uh, got to keep growing ourselves and and try to find a way to stack a few wins together and and get some momentum. Troy still has one SEC opponent on the schedule, though that game is not until November 3rd when the Trojans head up to Rocky Top to take on Tennessee. The Trojan soccer team wrapped up their non-conference schedule Sunday afternoon with a home match against Mercer. The Trojans fell to the Bears 4-1 at the Troy Soccer Complex. Chelsea Williams scored the Trojans' lone goal on the day. Williams got the Trojans on the board in the 35th minute, converting on a corner kick. The Bears' four goals came from four different players. Coach Chris Bentley on the loss. Honestly, I thought we had a, did a lot of nice things. We had to run a play quite a bit of the game, um, created a lot. Um, 
it's a weird game. I mean, uh, I think they scored against the run of play. Um, we created some problems uh, for ourselves more than I think they really did. Well, the Trojans are back in action on Friday when they play host to Florida Atlantic, and we'll have more about that game later in our preview section. The volleyball team was right up the road in Montgomery over the weekend for the ASU Invitational. The Trojans had a good start to the weekend with a straight set win over Alabama State. It was the Trojans' defense that helped win this one, holding the Hornets to a negative attack percentage. Blair Winston led the way with 10 kills for the Trojans. The Trojans kept things rolling with the momentum with another three-set win, this time over Jackson State. Devin Von Pingle had 11 kills with Courtney Cohen adding a team-high 17 digs. Then on Saturday, the Trojans went to the wire with Maryland Eastern Shore. The Trojans fell to the Seahawks 3-2 to wrap up the tournament in Montgomery. Brianna Coletti set a school record with 12 total blocks thanks to one solo block and 11 block assist. Cohen led the way with 17 digs while Alexandra Alexander and Blair Winston each posted 13. Offensively, Von Pingle led the way for Troy with 9 kills and just 2 errors, followed by Coletti and Kayla Pickert who each posted 8 kills. In only their second home match of the season, the Trojan volleyball team was able to take care of business as they swept the Rattlers of Florida A&M Tuesday night. The Trojans won in convincing fashion 25-13, 25-18, and 25-21. Coletti led the Trojans with 14 kills, seven of those coming in the final set. Kayla Pickard added a, another 10 kills on the night, while Alexander posted 37 assists. Head coach Sonny Kirkpatrick said his team still needs improvement headed into conference play. We attacked the ball a lot better tonight. Uh, we had some silly errors from our hitters that uh, they just they weren't very smart in what was in front of them. And, and for us to 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 be better on Friday and Saturday, we've got to do a better job of cleaning that stuff up. The Trojans' record is now nine and six on the year. The Troy men's and women's cross country teams kept the Trojan action in state as they traveled to Mobile to take part in the Azalea City Classic Saturday morning. The men's team finished third behind Auburn and South Alabama in the 8K race. They were led by senior Enoch Karui, who finished sixth with a time of 29 minutes, 59.37 seconds. Troy's women's team finished eighth overall in the 6K race. They were led Saturday by freshman Julia Ostendorf, who finished 15th with a time of 23 minutes, 27.19 seconds. Well, last week we gave you a brief introduction to the new Troy University Athletic Director, John Hartwell. Hartwell was formally introduced last Friday on campus. Our family is extremely excited and it is great to be a Trojan. John Hartwell joins Troy University after serving nine years as the University of Mississippi Senior Executive Associate Athletics Director. Hartwell is originally from Mobile and has worked in athletics administration since 1997. But his athletics background was not the only reason he was desirable for the position. Well, he is a good combination of uh, a man who understands athletics, but he's had uh, some rich uh, financial experience. He understands that the, the revenue side of this uh, challenge is important, the management is important, but also the vision. Hartwell made it clear that he had a vision in mind for the Trojan athletic program. A constant commitment to and maximum effort for three things. Academic excellence, positive social development, and last but not least at all, winning championships. However, it's not just about winning for Hartwell, it's how you go about doing it. Winning the right way. That's kind of, you, you'll hear, hear me talk about winning the right way. All of those things are a part of winning the right way. There were over 65 applicants for the position, and 25 of those were current athletic directors or associate athletic directors. But Chancellor Hawkins said Hartwell stood apart from the rest. Uh, John Hartwell uh, is one of the best prepared that I've ever met. I think uh, he will serve us well. He has the, the experience, the passion, the understanding as a former student athlete, and I think is uh, someone who... Uh, uh, has great vision for athletics and uh, I believe is the perfect choice for Troy University. Trojan Sports Now.